Today we are brewing with Quebec yeast. This is a huge innovation in brewing. And innovations in brewing don't happen very often. Stick around. Hey, what's going on guys? CH here today with Mike from Culver Brewing in Carlsbad, California. Head brewer, co-owner, and he also runs a class at Miracosta College where he teaches students to become production brewers. We're gonna talk about that more at the end though. Here's why today's brew day is so special. Kavik yeast. Kavik? Kavik? The strain that will eat anything at any temperature. Kinda like me when I'm super ripped. It's the oldest yeast you've never heard of. I've talked to brewers who have brewed amazing beer using this yeast, and they fermented their beer even over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Word around the campfire is that this yeast has a great reputation at high temps without producing any off flavors. So what's the deal with this yeast? This strain stems from Western Norway. It's been around since prehistoric farmhouse brewing, but has only become available to commercial brewers as of recently. Some say the biggest shock of this yeast is how well it performs at such a wide temperature range. But I think the bigger factor is that I've read that it could ferment and hit your final gravity within one to two days. Think about that. When I got into brewing, the old wives tale was uh, two weeks, 10 to 14 days for fermentation. Over time, I learned with active yeast, and precise temp control, my beer didn't have to take 14 days to produce the alcohol content that I was going for. Sometimes I could hit my final gravity in seven to eight days, maybe five days if I got lucky. But some say the next day sounds way too good to be true. Let's see if it's a Fugazi. Fugazi, it's a uh, fake. Yeah, hey, Fugazi, Fugazi. <laughs> All right, today we're brewing a hazy IPA because word around the campfire is that this yeast gives off tropical aromas, which means that it's going to be good for pales, hazies, West Coast IPAs. And uh, our focus is cranking this beer out as soon as possible. So we're not going to be dry hopping or doing anything crazy. The goal for this video is to turn around great beer in the shortest amount of time. Don't be getting too crazy on me. First things first, going to snag 10 gallons of water from this machine. 7-Eleven, Circle K, grocery stores, they all have them. Grain bill. And this recipe will be in the description of the video. All right, let's hit it off with uh, nine pounds of two row, 1.5 pounds flaked wheat, and one pound flaked oats. All of these grains are very accessible. Your local homebrew store should most definitely have these. And if some of your flaked fermentables look like this, they don't have to be milled. It could actually screw up your mill. I used to work at a homebrew place and uh, this used to get stuck in all the rollers and stuff. Here's our Mythbuster FAQ of the day. I've had this bulk two row for almost like three years in this plastic container. It's got a gasket, but three years is a long time. Time to see if three year old bags of two row still work. Hops, Magic Mike coming through with uh, three ounces uh, Laurel and three ounces Amarillo. If you can't find that, I recommend Simcoe, Mosaic, Eldorado. And then obviously the yeast, I'm doing yeast video. We should have the yeast, am I right? And today I'm gonna go straight to the source. Plus I've never been to White Labs, no shipping. And I'm not gonna buy an expired pack from a local homebrew store who's trying to sell it for half off. Straight to the lab. Really great beer, good hospitality as well. Kinda looks like Jurassic Park in there. <laughs> All right, let's get after this five gallon batch. Shooting for like a 6% beer. I am worried about the rain, but the show's gotta go on. All right, mash tone Wawa. Gonna use my big Pyrex glass to measure out this 3.6 gallons. Gonna heat up my water to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got my system down to a T. I actually think that's like the biggest factor in home brewing. Just getting to know your system, just getting your system down. You know, like how long everything takes, knowing how much water you're gonna lose, what to do with all the waiting around time, how much sugar you're gonna get, all that stuff. While the water's heating up, I'm gonna put my mash tun together. False bottom, correct inner diameter for my silicone tubing. Gonna lift up my kettle and uh, burn the shit out of my new workbench. Always fill it up with water first. Time to pour in our grains. Spend about five to 10 minutes mixing your grains in. We don't want any clumps. And time to check the temp. Forgot to turn my phone sideways. Apologies, but there it is. 150, 52 mash. So far, so good. Let's cap it and burn some errands. Time to clean kettles, fermenters with hot water and OxyClean. It's lunchtime. Get some chow in you. Get a chimmy in you. Head to your nearest beer cave and buy up. If you followed these steps, your mash will be done by now. All right, back at HQ. 
Now, if you want a full detailed, boring 25 minute video talking about all the steps of all grain brewing, we do have that and I'll throw a link in the bio. But for the sake of everybody not being bored to death, we're gonna sum a few things up. We're gonna boil off for about 40 minutes and we're gonna boil for only 25 minutes. We're not trying to get any bitterness from our hops. We threw our hops in at flame out, but uh, had too many beers at this point to remember to film it. But you can imagine what that shot would look like. Now here's where things get interesting. We chilled our wort to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in about 15 minutes with no pre-chiller. It's a cold day and the tap water's temperature is gonna do the trick. And then we pitched our yeast at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour some of the wort into a vial, wait till it gets to room temperature. OG looking like, call it 1053. And it was crazy. Within 30 minutes, the airlock was going nuts. It's gotta be over 90 degrees in this carboy. Gonna stash the loot in my hallway in the darkness and decide that it's a pretty good time for a... And if you're in the market for buying stuff that you do not need, be sure to check out homebrewforlife.com. I'm kind of thinking that the beer could be done in one day. Let's keep the day moving though. Huge shout out to Mother Nature for being chill and choosing to rain now. Gonna head over to a buddy's brewery. Support the homies. Watch the barrages shred. Headbangers ball. The next day. Wake up hungover and live in shame for the first half of the day. Time to check on the beer. Activity has drastically slowed down in the airlock. Crazy, maybe it's done. But I pulled the gravity reading and the beer was like 1024, which is way too sugary and leaves us with a beer less than 4%. Not good. All right, get ready for the plot twist. The back of White Lab says pitch around late 60s, which is pretty much the temperature of my closet. But remember, when we first pitched the yeast at around 90 or 95 Fahrenheit, the yeast started going AWOL. Maybe the yeast works better when it's hotter. Time to go all Mythbusters. I'm gonna fill up my bathtub as hot as it can go. We'll call it 110. I'm gonna put my carboy in it. This should bring my wart up to about 80 or 85 degrees. And check this out. Within a couple of minutes, look at the airlock. The yeast has resurrected itself to full blast. Maybe do this at night if you have a tub. If you wake up, it'll probably be done in the morning. Eight hours later. Let's do another gravity reading. Okay, cool, call it 1009, which gives us about a 5.8% beer. And all right, are two rows even good after three years? I've said it before, you can read all the books that you want, but the best way for me to learn is just trial and error. So the next time I brew with this yeast, which is probably gonna be really soon, I'm just gonna put the carboy in a tub, and then when the tub gets cold, I'm gonna fill it up with more hot water, and now after probably one day, you should hit your final gravity. Now we have a bunch of videos on how to cake beer, how to uh, force carbonate, how to build keg raters and uh, get your beer cold and all that stuff. I'm not gonna talk in detail the process of that, but I will leave links in the description for you guys. Long story short, I set this beer at 10 PSI for three days. <laughs> no. right. Actually step back. Like, yeah, okay. Because like, yeah. I can always zoom in. It's delightful um, for, yeah, like we were saying, as fast as it got turned around, it is amazing. It's good, it's like, I feel like I can drink it, like a lot of it, maybe all of it. I think it's delicious for what we did, you know, the 20 minute boil. Like super clean. I would have expected more esters, which is not a bad thing. It's like so clean in that amount of time is impressive. I think a lot of people kind of question the yeast strain and what's said about it. Yeah, carbonation is a little low, but it makes it even more drinkable. Um, as far as like, oh, you can turn it around that fast. It's super clean, blah, blah, blah. And it's all true. The thing that took the longest was actually just carbonating it. I wouldn't change anything differently. Uh, great color, great. Uh, it ended up finishing about low 6%. And uh, I think this could totally sell if I actually had Open a brewery, brewery or yeah. a tasting room. <laughs> we might adopt this at mm -hmm. Culver. Hey, thanks for watching this week's video, guys. Shout out to Mike from Culver. If you're ever in North County of San Diego, be sure to check out Culver Beer. And as always, cheers to eating good and cheers to drinking good.